Hello there, Science Kids! Welcome sa ating new episode ng Grade 4 Science Learning Activities. Simula na ng inyong pag-aaral para sa ikalawang markahan. Kaya naman halina at atin ang umpisahan ang ating mga aralin na inyong pag-aaralan sa inyong mga tahanan. My name is Teacher Lariza at narito na ang ating new episode para sa second quarter. Bago natin simula ng ating aralin ukol sa living things and their environment, ay umpisahan muna nating unawain ang pinakamaliit na unit ng mga bagay na may buhay sa ating daigdig. Let us first define the different terminologies that you need in understanding this science concept. Simulan natin ang ating pag-aaral mula sa chemical level ng structural organization ng isang organism. Ito ay magsisimula sa molecules. Molecule is defined as two or more atoms of the same element that are bound together. Or in Tagalog, ang molecules ay binubuo ng dalawa o higit pang atom na may magkaparehong elemento na nagsama. Next is cell. Cell is defined as the basic unit of all living organisms. Or in Tagalog, ang cell ay ang pinakasaliga ng bumubuo sa lahat ng mga nilalang na may buhay sa buong mundo. In its chemical level, cell is composed of different molecules. Molecules ang bumubuo sa cell. Ang cell ay may dalawang uri. Ito ay ang prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Ang prokaryotic cell ay ang uri ng cell na walang membrane-bound nucleus. Samantalang ang eukaryotic cell naman ay ang uri ng cell na may membrane-bound nucleus. Ang nucleus ay ang bahagi ng cell kung saan matatagpuan ang genetic code ng isang organismo. Ang ilan sa mga halimbawa ng mga organism na kabilang sa prokaryotes ay ang mga bakterya at ang mga microorganism na kabilang sa kingdom archaea. Ang mga organism na ito ay matatagpuan sa mga lugar na may extreme conditions. Ang ilan naman sa mga halimbawa ng mga cell na kabilang sa eukaryotes ay ang animal, plant, fungi, and protist. The third level of the structural organization of an organism is the tissue. Tissue is defined as the group of similar cells that have common function. Or in Tagalog, ang tissue ay grupo ng mga cell na merong iisang function o gampanin. There are four basic types of tissues. These include epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, connective tissue, and the nervous tissue. Let us discuss them one by one. Number one is epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue covers the body surface and lines body cavities. Ito ang uri ng tissue na nagsisilbing takip ng ating katawan. Ang tissue din na ito ay nagsisilbing pagitan sa loob ng body cavities ng isang organism. Number two is the muscle tissue. Muscle tissue provides movement. Or in Tagalog, ito ang uri ng tissue na ginagamit natin sa ating paggalaw. Number 3 is the connective tissue. Connective tissue supports and protects our body organs. Or in Tagalog, ang connective tissue ay ang uri ng tissue na sumusuporta sa ating katawan upang tayo ay makatayo at ang pumuprotekta sa ating internal organs sa loob ng ating katawan. Ang connective tissue ay ang tissue na bumubuo sa ating mga buto. Number 4 is the nervous tissue. Nervous tissue provides a means of rapid internal communication by transmitting electrical impulses. Or in Tagalog, ang nervous tissue ay ang uri ng tissue na may kinalaman sa mabilis na palitan ng mensahe sa loob ng ating katawan. Ang nervous tissue ay ang tissue na bumubuo sa ating nervous system na may kinalaman sa ating reaksyon o pagtugon sa mga bagay na nangyayari sa ating paligid o nararanasan ng ating katawan. After the tissue level comes the organ level. Organ is a structure that is composed of two or more types of tissue and performs a set of functions for the body. Or in Tagalog, ang organ ay isang uri ng istruktura sa ating katawan na binubuo ng dalawa o higit pang uri ng tissue na gumaganap sa isang tiyak na gampanin para sa ating katawan. Ilan sa mga halimbawa ng organ na matatagpuan sa ating katawan ay ang brain, 
stomach, heart, lungs, muscles, and bones, among others. Next is organ system. Organ system is composed of many organs that are working together to accomplish a common goal or purpose. Or in Tagalog, kapag sinabi nating organ system, ito yung sistematikong grupo ng mga organ sa loob ng ating katawan na nagtutulong-tulong upang magampanan ng isang tiyak na gawain para sa ating katawan. Lastly, we have organism. Organism is a living thing that is composed of interconnected organ systems. Or in Tagalog, ang isang organismo ay isang nilalang na may buhay na may kompletong organ system sa loob ng kanyang katawan. Again, here are the different levels of organization of our being. Tayong lahat ay nagsimula sa molecules. Ang molecules na nagsama-sama ay makakabuo ng cell. Ang cell na may pare-parehong function ay makakabuo ng isang tissue. Ang tissue na may pare-parehong function ay makakabuo ng isang organ. Ang organ na nagsama-sama upang makagawa ng isang ganap na gawain para sa ating katawan ay tinatawag na organ system. Kapag lahat ng organ system ay nakumpleto na, ay magkakabuo tayo ng isang organism. Science Learning Episode Major Organs of Human Body Now that you know the levels of organization of our being, let us now move forward to the discussion of the major organs of the human body. Our body is composed of different types of bones. Again, our bone is an organ that is composed of connective tissue. Ang ating buto ang bumubuo sa ating skeletal system. Bones are the structural foundation for us to be able to stand up and form the shape of our body. Aside from that, it protects most of our internal organs. Ang ating mga buto ay nagsisilbing haligi o pundasyon ng ating katawan upang tayo ay makatayo at magkaroon ng hugis. Bukod pa rito, ang ating mga buto ay pumoprotekta sa ilan sa mga organ sa ating katawan. For an instance, the skull protects our brain. Our backbone protects our spinal cord and our ribs protect our heart and lungs. When we were born, we have an approximately 300 bones in our body. But as we grow older, these bones become 206 in total. Ito ay dahil habang tayo ay lumalaki ay nagdurugtong ang ating mga buto. Or in English, our bones fuse together. Our skeletal system has two subdivisions, the actual skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. What is the difference between these two subdivisions? The actual skeleton consists of the vertical axis of our body. It includes the bones of our head, our neck, our back, and our chest. This is consists of the 80 bones of our body. On the other hand, Appendicular skeleton consists of 126 bones of our body. It includes bones of the upper and lower limbs. Ang ating mga buto ay konektado sa isa't isa. The point at which our bone connect and meet is called joint. Our joint and muscles allow our bones to move. Speaking of movement, let us now talk about our muscles. Again, our muscles are composed of muscle tissue which aid body movements. Together with our joints, muscles form a fleshy part that enable our body to move. Tulad ng ating mga buto, ang muscle ay nagbibigay ng hugis at forma sa ating katawan. Muscles are the main organ of the muscular system. We have two types of muscles in terms of movement. These are the involuntary muscle and the voluntary muscles. Voluntary muscles are those muscles that we can control, while involuntary muscles are those muscles that we cannot control. In Tagalog, kapag sinabi nating voluntary muscles, ito ay ang mga kalamnan sa ating katawan na ating naigagalaw o nakokontrol natin ang paggalaw nito. Samantalang pag sinabi naman nating involuntary muscle, ito ay ang muscle sa ating katawan na hindi natin kontrolado at kusang gumagalaw. 
Ang ilan sa mga halimbawa ng voluntary muscle ay ang mga muscle natin sa ating muka, kamay, binti at paa. Samantalang, ang ilan naman sa mga halimbawa ng involuntary muscle ay ang ating puso at ang ating sigmura. How do we make a movement? Muscles can pull bones but it cannot push them back to its original position. So, it works in pairs of flexors and extensors. The flexor contracts to bend a limb at a joint. Then, when the movement is completed, the flexor relaxes and the extensor contracts to extend or straighten the limb at the same joint. We need to eat food to gain energy for our daily activities. We get this energy and nourishment from the food that we eat through digestion. The third organ that we are going to discuss in this episode are the main organs of our digestive system. These are the stomach and the intestine. We have two methods of digestion, the mechanical digestion and the chemical digestion. The chemical digestion involves enzymes while mechanical digestion involves physical movement to make food smaller. Kapag sinabi nating mechanical digestion, ito ay nangyayari sa ating bibig kapag tayo ay ngumunguya ng ating pagkain gamit ang ating ngipin. Lumiliit ang ating mga kinakain sa pamamagitan ng ating ngipin, kaya naman dito nangyayari ang tinatawag na mechanical digestion. Once na ang ating saliva o laway ay humalo sa ating ninunguya, dito pumapasok ang chemical digestion. Bakit? Dahil mayroon tayong enzymes na matatagpuan sa ating laway na tumutulong upang matunaw ang ating ninunguyang pagkain. Digestive system is composed of two groups of organs. These are the alimentary canal and the accessory organs. Alimentary canal is a long, hollow, muscular tube which extends from our mouth down to our anus. While the accessory organs of the digestive system aids in the process of digestion by storing and secreting digestive juices and enzymes. The stomach is the part of the digestive system where impartial digestion takes place. Or in Tagalog, ang sikmura ay ang parte ng ating digestive system kung saan ang bahagyang pagkatunaw ng ating pagkain ay nagaganap. It has layers of muscles which are responsible for squeezing the food. During this process, special substances like enzymes mix with the squeezed food and converts it into smaller pieces. The food that we eat fully digests once it reaches our small intestine where in the final digestion and absorption of nutrients take place. The small intestine chemically changes the food that we eat by adding digestive juices and enzymes that convert food into nutrients in the form of molecule. Ang pagkaing bahagyang natunaw sa ating sikmura ay tuluyang matutunaw sa ating small intestine sa pamamagitan ng digestive juices and enzymes na tumutulong upang maging nutrients ang pagkain na ating kinain sa anyo ng molecule. The undigested food will now go to the large intestine which contains symbiotic bacteria which aid in the breaking down of waste to extract small amounts of nutrients. Feces in the large intestine will exit our body through our anal canal. Do you want to learn more of the other major organs of the human body? Click the link below this video for the part 2 of our lesson in the major organs of human body. That's it, science kids! I hope you learned something new in our episode for today. If you like this video, do not forget to hit like and subscribe sa ating channel to stay notified sa ating upcoming videos. See you again next week! Bye-bye!